Hello, Hellbound friends. I woke up today and hadn't even gotten the sleep out of my eyes when I came across some tweets that were so abhorrent, so disgusting, and so filled with sugary sweet hate that I knew they could only come from one source. That's right, it's an SJ video. So if you're ready for some absolutely heinous thoughts, stay tuned and please subscribe. So the first tweet that I read was, God did not commit genocide in the Old Testament as many atheists claim. God justly administered capital punishment for egregious crimes such as proudly advocating evil and sacrificing infants to Molech by burning them alive while singing and dancing, as the Canaanites did. I won't even go into the fact that this is all hearsay according to the written scriptures of the enemies of the Canaanites, but, you know, the best way to deal with a problem is to go on a killing spree. I mean, if God done it, it must be holy, correct? Even if we took you seriously, SJ, how would this not be genocide? Genocide is defined as the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation. If God killed everyone in Sodom and Gomorrah, including men, women, and children, as well as puppies, then it definitely would be considered genocide. Now, I suppose you could take the disgusting stance that some genocide is justified or moral, but don't for one second try to say it wasn't genocide. That's just ridiculous. So my friend Surus interjected and said, so the infants were just collateral damage? A completely reasonable and respectable question. What did the infants do to deserve death? Obviously a child can't be morally reprehensible. Did they suck on their pacifiers in a sinful way? There is absolutely no way in my mind that you can justify the mass murder of infants and claim that it was done for the moral good of the world. But SJ is sure going to try. God spared them of the life ahead of them in morally depraved societies. He called them back to heaven. God spared them from sin and sent them to heaven instantly. So there you have it, folks. Free will does not exist. You heard it from SJ's tweet right here. God completely eliminated all those children's free will and instantly sent them to heaven. Of course, this was after he burned them in what would have been an absolutely horrific death. But isn't God good? They didn't get a choice, they had no free will, they were burned to death and then they got to go to heaven. But wait, heaven is a concept that didn't exist in Judaism. Isn't that odd? So another friend interjected with a question about the flood. What did all those drowned babies do to warrant capital punishment? Once again, a completely reasonable question to ask when you are faced with someone who is defending genocide. Why did God drown all those babies in the flood? Now, surely, SJ will see the error of her original tweet. You can't actually defend the idea that God is good and never committed genocide when he not only burned children to death and also drowned countless children in the flood. Will she relent? No, think again. God called them to heaven in mercy before they could grow up in the disgusting cultures in which they were born. So, yet again, SJ claims that it was merciful to murder all the men, women, and children because God instantly transported the babies to a realm that, I will repeat, did not exist in Judaism. Jews, in the Old Testament, did not believe in the resurrection. There was no heaven, no hell, there was simply death, and some believed that there was rest after death, but no real afterlife. Heaven and hell were added in the New Testament by stealing ideas from Greek culture. Anyway, I have to wonder with this mindset if SJ is in agreement with what Andrea Yates did to her children. I mean, didn't she spare her children from growing up in a wicked society? One would assume by her reasoning that those children were instantly transported to heaven, and so then Andrea Yates's actions could not be considered any less moral than a god that murdered thousands of infants through fire and floods. Aren't you pro-life, SJ? 
So at this point, my friend Steve enters the picture, and this goes back and forth for a while, but it starts with Steve stating this. This is a pretty sick display of morality. This is everything that is wrong with Christian apologetics. I couldn't agree more, Steve. The idea that someone would ever try to justify the murder of children as being good and moral is just disgusting. I would also agree that this is a major problem with Christian apologetics. When you are so stuck in your own beliefs that you cannot admit a wrong even when it is blatantly obvious, it's truly a sad situation that you find yourself in. I'll admit that at one point in my life I might have been cheering SJ on, but today, after several years of horrific pain which comes from deconversion, I can clearly state that genocide and infanticide is wrong, regardless of if a divine being was carrying out the act. So does SJ come to her senses and try to fix the earlier issues? No. She doubles down and says something so insulting that I can barely even fathom the thought. You and I share an objective morality and objective duties to treat our fellow humans in equal and loving ways. Thank God. No. Just no. SJ, you do not share a moral compass with any of the people who have responded to you in these tweets. You don't share a moral compass with Steve, Suris, or Mary, and you definitely don't share a moral compass with me. There's absolutely no way that I would ever argue for the justification of genocide or infanticide. SJ, I'm gonna level with you. You seriously seem like a nice person, yet your faith makes you say awful things, and throughout history it's made other people say awful things and do awful things. The person, SJ, is not a bad person. I don't believe that. I've heard you talk one-on-one -on -one with people off-camera, and you're actually a decent person. I'm going to get some flack for saying that, but I think it's true. And yet, SJ, your faith is creating a monster. Please look at the things you have said. Try for just a moment to remove faith from the picture. Try reading these stories from the standpoint of a logical, rational, and reasonable person. These stories are not good. They are barbaric, written in a barbarous time by barbarous people. They are not at all the basis for our modern morality. We did that. We took the morality that we had been taught throughout history and fixed it. We are far more moral now than we were at any point in history. This came in great part due to people who said to themselves, God can be wrong. Let's fix it. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, smush the subscribe button, and share. And as always, we live in a crazy world, but please don't panic.